Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. Full Gear ended about uh, 12 hours ago. And you're asking yourself, well, what just happened? We're going to get into it, all of the matches, especially the three on the pre-show. And some major changes that went down. And I won't be before you long. I am Jeremy Pierce. This is what just happened. Full Gear 20. 23. So first up on the pre-show, we had our first match of the evening, evening on Zero Hour, which is what the pre-show was called. Eddie Kingston defending the Ring of Honor World Championship against Jay Lethal, and this was fine. This 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 was this this was this was fine. It was nothing special. The usual we got the usual antics from Jeff Jarrett and company and Jay Lethal, and it was cool. Um, Eddie was never losing this this belt. Lethal controlled pretty much the whole middle of the match but things fell apart when karen jared got involved satin singh got involved um ortiz came to back up eddie so i want to see where we're going to go with that but eddie uh won as uh he blocked the lethal injection and landed a half and half suplex and a spinning back fist for the win he didn't have some fun on the stage uh, with uh, Renee and RJ City because what's the boy's name? Stokely Hathaway was on commentary and Eddie called them out. Our second match on the card was Claudio Castanoli versus Buddy Matthews and this was a good match with some good action from these two. It wasn't anything crazy. Um, it was kind of just, you know a little heater to get people involved but I really really enjoyed this and I think if these dudes were given a little bit more time they could really put on a banger of a match uh, Claudio ultimately won tapping out Buddy Matthews with the sharpshooter Claudio waited and asked for a handshake from uh, Buddy but he paused him and brushed him off showing that disrespect so it's going to go down at some point between the BCC and the House of Black. And our quote-unquote main event of the pre-show was MGF and Samoa Joe defending the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships against the Guns. And this was um, this was cool. Joe backed up um, MGF and uh, really, really held his own. Cause, I mean, come on, it's, it's Samoa Joe. He even kicked out of a three. Uh, now nah, he didn't kick out, but MJF broke up the three to the Yuma after they hit it on Samoa Joe. And it looked like the guns were going to go to cheat when Adam Cole's music came on. Uh, he walked out to the ring on crutches. And then Joe locked in a coquina clutch on Colton Gunn and tapped him out. After the match, though, after Joe left, the guns absolutely destroyed Jay White. Destroyed his leg and uh, it was bad it was bad they even kind of did a stretching job and cole was very very worried um so we will see what happens with the main event on to the main card our first match of the evening was christian cage nick wayne and luchasaurus going against sting adam cole and darby allen and they were accompanied by rick flair um this match was fine uh it's it served its purpose to one build up to adam copeland versus christian and uh, using Nick Wayne to take bumps to show that okay he's here on the main stage. Uh, Darby just got absolutely murdered by Luchasaurus. It was crazy, uh, and I was surprised that this was a normal tag team match. No st special stipulations because Sting matches usually have special stipulations. Um, Ric Flair and Christian got into it, and there was no DQ because the ref saw Christian hit Ric Flair first so ref's discretion um, but it was nothing major and then Christian just low blow Ric Flair uh, but in the end uh, Christian ran from Adam Copeland uh, Darby hit uh, Luchasaurus with a coffin drop and Edge hit a spear and made the pin and got the win next up we had on the stage uh, it was announced that MGF can't compete and that Jay White's will be awarded the championship but then adam cole came out and said that he will replace mjf and they'll do that in the main event and you know cole and white got some history you know because of their history in the bullet club back in new japan so this was good but i want to see where we go with 
this. Next up, we had Orange Cassidy defending the International Championship against John Moxley. This is round two um, for them. And this match was crazy. It was intense. It was brutal. But it wasn't long, and I'm glad it wasn't long. Essentially, these two uh, wanted to prove that they deserve that championship. And it was more so on Cassidy to show that this is his championship and that he can win this. Um, of course, there was blood because it's a John Moxley match. And when is, what is a John Moxley match without any blood? But in the end, Orange Cassidy won clean. Um, Mox started mocking Cassidy with his kicks and then Cassidy shoved Mox into the exposed turnbuckle, which he got uh, exposed earlier in the match. And he landed an orange punch, three of them things. And then he hit a beach break. Sorry, he hit two more orange punches and then hit a beach break, defeating Moxley clean. Um, I wonder what's next for Mox and where he goes from here. I think we're going to transition into the BCC versus the House of Black and maybe start building up the BCC and House of Black back to um, Trio's Championship contenders. Next up. Uh, we had a video be, uh, that told us that Mark Briscoe will be in the Continental Classic. So that includes Mark Briscoe, Brian Danielson, and Andrade. So we have nine more names to be introduced into the Continental Classic. Next up, we had the AEW Women's Championship as Sakaro Shida was defending against Timeless Tony Storm. And I like this. Um, I, I, I like this a lot. Uh, these two have had better matches and can have better matches. And the story was that essentially Sheeta has Tony Storm's number and kind of has had it for a while. So what would happen when Tony Storm is unleashed and is kind of uh, crazy? But uh, the match change when uh, Luther gave Sheeta a, a silver plate and she put it in the back of our trunks. The screen went black and white, and then uh, she hit the hip attack <laughs> for the with the film effect, um, and then hit the uh, Storm Zero to win. And Tony Storm is now a three-time champion. I'm, I'm, I need to I need to make I need to I need to make sure that I'm not tripping, but I think Tony Storm is now a three-time champion. Yes, joining Jamie, joining Sheeta, Storm is now a three-time champion. So, but this was this was good. I expect a rematch, and I what I didn't expect was Mariah May not to show. I really thought Mariah May would uh, be involved in the match, possibly helping Tony win. But now, timeless Tony Storm is your women's champion. Next up, right backstage, we had an interview with. Uh, Eddie Kingston who was just tired and he said now that he is in the um, G, uh, I was going to say G1 Continental Classic he is going to put his Ring of Honor and his New Japan Strong title on the line in this tournament and the winner gets those two in the Continental Championship it's a Triple Crown Champion and they will defend these championships throughout all the promotions New Japan Ring of Honor and the Continental Championship obviously will be defended in the second Continental Classic. But um, I, I like this. But also, AW might have too many championships. I'm starting to get to that point. Next up, we had a fatal four way ladder match for the AEW World Tag Team Championships as Ricky Starks and Big Bill were defending against FTR, the House of Black, and La Flaxion and Ignorantables. And excuse me, I thought that it would be Roosh and Preston Vance. It was actually Roosh and Drillistico representing LFI but this was all um, points crazy there were so many crazy spots that I thought everybody died and I just I don't I don't know I don't know how to cover it and modern ladder match is starting to become spot fest and wrestlers just putting their bodies on a line I think we need to start dialing back these down these matches down but the match was good uh there were so many, there were so many spots. Um, the fact that Dax and Cash really got involved and put their thing down in this match, when this is something you know, they really don't do work, but ultimately Big Bill and Ricky Starks won. 
retaining their tag team championships and i like that i i, I like that because they needed to needed a good good um defense so what's next for all of these teams i can see we're gonna tr we're probably still gonna transition to also lfi versus the house of black versus the bcc so we need some more trios contenders and we can still stick with ftr um and ricky starks and big bill for the tag team championships but we got an update on the um continental classic that this will be as the scholar explained a modern triple crown american a modern american triple crown champion so i are, are they merging the championships we'll have to see we'll have we'll have to see because i don't want the championships to merge like ring honor needs a world champion uh, next up we had a triple threat match for the aew T tbs championship with chris light and defending against julia hart and sky blue and i just want to say shout out to all three of these women these are three homegrown talents and two of them julia hart and sky blue started at the bottom wrestling on dark and dark elevation and to go from there to being on a pay-per-view fighting for a major championship you love to see that growth in the wrestling industry um sky blue came out with a new look more wearing more black dark black and wearing a black crown but essentially uh real real, real talk chris statlander dominated the majority of this match because she's just so strong and so powerful and she even still has the speed to match with julia hart and sky blue but she dominated a lot of this match and occasionally uh julia hart and sky blue got involved and they shook hands but then Hart turned on sky and everybody did their part julia hart looked good sky blue looked good uh sky even was able to hit the cold blue on statlander but kicked out and it took it took a lot uh because now that honestly now that this woman were going to defeat statlander she was going to really she was just dominating this match so stat hit some suplexes and <laughs> as she was saying, human suplex, Excal Excalibur said, one might even call her a human suplex machine. Tash was like, whoa, 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 relax, easy there. Um, Stat landed the Saturday Night Fever on Sky Blue, but then Joya Hart closed line Stat landed over the top rope and pinned Sky Blue. So we have a new TBS champion. Um, the crowd was quiet for the early part of this match, but really in the closing minutes, really, really picked up. And it's good to see julia hart gets a um championship win so now we can kind of transition her over there and we can actually transition chris statlander up into the main event and i think it's really time for her to be going for the women's championship but this was this was this was good next up we had that mystery signing and it was none other than will Osprey, who is now all elite with Tony Schiavone. Um, the AEW World Championship picture has gotten a little bit more complex, but Osprey said he's happy to be here and he's got bad news for everyone. Um, he's coming for the top, he's coming for everybody, he's coming for the championship. Um, he said he'll finish up his work in New Japan and then he'll be on the road to revolution. And then he is officially, officially all elite, especially for Wembley Stadium. Um, yeah, I think I think by the time we get to uh, all in at next year at Wembley, he will be fighting for the world championship. That's just me. Next up, we had our clear match of the evening in an absolutely banger of a match. As Hangman Adam Page took on Swerve Strickland in a Texas death match and boy this was intense so we start out with prince nana coming out with some dancers and it was great show prince nana some love but as swerve was coming out and they were in the ring hangman just came out of nowhere and started attacking him. this <laughs> this match was insane it got it got it got it got brutal it got bloody. There was barbed wire everywhere. Um, <laughs> Swerve is a madman. Um, he used a stapler that he took from Hangman's house that his kid used. 
and now they're bleeding and hangman was just completely unhinged there was bar water i like it's one point it, hangman was drinking swerve's blood i just it's, this was so crazy it was this was this is the longest i believe the longest match on the card um Chris Nana got murdered. He took a dead eye off of the stage, off the ring, through the table. And then, and then Swerve broke a cinder block on Hangman's back. And then there was more chairs and more barbed wire. And Swerve hung, hung Hangman up with a chain. <laughs> I like I don't I don't know. And then and then and then Hangman collapsed and the ref counted to 10 and Swerve won. This was one of the most violent and most bloody matches I have ever seen in my life that's outside of CZW. But I wasn't expecting Swerve to win. I thought this was going to be a trilogy. But Swerve winning tells me that I think they're confident in pushing him up the card and giving him a bigger role in the company, which which is which is I'm all here for. This is by far a match of the evening. Next up... Um, the Young Bucks versus the Golden Jets team of Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho Donkhouse was on commentary and this told the story of um, the Bucks going against their friend Kenny and it was hard to really like be into this match just because of what happened prior with the Texas death match but this really really worked well and the Bucks and the and, and Kenny really had each other's number. They knew he count. They knew how to counter their moves. Um, Matt hit a one wing angel on Kenny Omega. Like that. That's what. That's what we were. That's what we were going for. Jericho uh, was was there. I'm not gonna say he was just there, but he took a lot of damage. But these four know each other so well, counting each other's moves. There's a lot of near falls, a lot of near uh, near spots, big spots, and the crowd near the end of the match really, really started to get involved. Um, and in the end, Omega hit the one week angle on Matt Jackson to win the match, taking along with them the young bucks tag team title shot and the bucks threw attention after the match so i like the heel version we're, we're going here with and they even low blow kenny and jericho during the match so this was good and in our main event that was um weird to say the least so adam cole came out on his crutches to face jay white but an ambulance showed up and there was MGF. So for the whole match, he was selling the knee. Adam Cole made sure MGF was okay before he could compete. And he was he was like, I'm good, I'm good. So uh, this seemed like the match was in a bag for Jay White. But MGF was was fighting. We'll see. He was fighting. And look, look, Jay White, Jay White controlled a lot of this match but there were times where mgf hit his spots he hit a kangaroo kick hurt his hurt his hurt himself hit a move on the top rope hurt himself he hit a cut a, a running cutter over the top rope which was an absolutely insane spot and i like how mgf has evolved as a professional wrestler but this was this was solid um jay white had the the perfect move for MGF as he as he kept hitting dragon screws on that injured leg. Remember, MGF's leg leg got injured earlier in the show during the um, pre-show. But as we get near the end of the match, you know there was going to be cheating involved. We had a rough spot. Um, the ref got knocked down. So uh, Jay White went to use the dime. Uh, first, he went to use the the championship. And it didn't work. Then he went to use the dynamite diamond ring, and he actually did hit MJF, but MJF was able to kick out. Then MJF behind the ref's back hit Jay White with the dynamite diamond ring and was able to get the win. Um, Adam Cole and MJF into the ring and celebrated, and we're gonna continue the story. There was no devil in the, in his cronies, um, which I which I liked. Um, I actually liked the devil not appearing because we were all waiting for the devil to make an appearance. 
but MJF showed heart he showed grits and he is your longest reigning world champion he's held the championship now for a calendar year um, so I'm curious as where we go from here um, Adam Cole being there being the friend was good uh, but who is the devil could it be Cole could it be Roddy hell could it be Britt Baker um, it was just tough to, to think that you know they were going to AEW were going to allow Adam Cole to defend the championship in a cast but we we we, we, we got it and I want to know where does where does where does JY go from here he needs to be re-upped you know what I mean given some more shine but overall this was a good show um full gear was good i am happy with a lot of the matches especially the women's match i mean, that really really uh puts a smile on my face and we move on to what we got next we have world's end and the continental classic coming up i hope they uh, AEW. i hope they clarify what's at stake in the continental classics i don't I, I don't know how i feel about three world championships being on the line in this tournament um but come back this Saturday for the High Risk Wrestling Podcast as we preview Survivor Series. But that is our show. That is Full Gear 2023 and what just happened. I am your host, Jeremy Pierce. Don't forget to check me out on the socials, Charismatic Creations on Facebook and YouTube, Charismatic underscore Creations 52 on Instagram. Of course, the 215 on Twitter. Peace.